Hey guys, Pirate Robotics here. We're team 89040B Dread Pirates, and this is our technically our second robot, but we just wanted to explain it. So for this robot, we built basically from the base up. We just had a 360 drive base, didn't really want to change much. It's 360 on 3.25. Uh, only complaints I have about this drivetrain, it's really long, so definitely go with something if you want to go faster, like 450 or something, but 3.25s are really good for getting over the barrier. So, we also double stacked our motor right here. You can see in there, it's kind of a mess back there, but... And then we have odometry, just one X and one Y, and then we have our IMU, so that's why we only need two. And then they're kind of chunky, but they're geared because we didn't have that much room. They have a limiter, but they also have a retraction system right here. So when uh, when autonomous is active, this piston will be down. When the piston is down, it allows the pods to touch the ground. And when it's up, it can't touch anymore. And also, this prevents them from being broken when touching the barrier. Next, we have our wings. We just got some zip ties and drilled some holes. And we have it banded so that when they go up, they come back down. And that allows it not to break so easily. It was also a lot easier. We didn't have to bend it or anything. And they're wedged. Makes it easy to push tri balls over the barrier. So next I want to talk about our custom polycarbonate. So we wanted to have a really nice, durable finish on it. It was originally just clear, but then we painted the back of it and put our vinyl on the back first. So you can see it's like pretty scratched up because it's been to, what, two tournaments now? Uh, both of which we won. And... They're very effective. So that finish is achieved by putting the, put the vinyl on the back and the, these letters are mirrored. This is kind of an example of it smaller, but this was on the front. You see how this, this can kind of get like scratched up and stuff. But if you put it on the back and mirror it when you cut it out, you can just always keep your letters not scratched. You can see it got scratched right there because we have this nut right here. But then you can have the paint and the vinyl on the back just lasts a lot longer. See, we had that up here too. All right, next. So we have these two back wings right here. And on this side, this flips out. And this is how we get our low goal. That's how we get, this is how we get our autonomous wind point. We can just sweep it out of the match load zone. On this side, we have this one with some mini little zip ties that touch the pole when we're match loading or trying to bowl and it makes it so that we just touch the pole. Another reason why we have the back wings is for skills. It allows us to have non-locking up here while we can still have locking. Okay, next we have our slapper right here. And this is a pretty unique design. I don't recommend doing it off of a 2chan because we had to put these little adapter things right here and they kind of bend. So we had to fix our meshing. You can see we, ha we ran a zip tie right here. So it just pulls that gear tight against the other gear. But this is like a really nice, clean way of mounting it. So it's just, it's really fast, Josh, when I activate it. So on our slapper, we have a single shot. And we have a auto fire mode with a distance sensor. So every time we put the grab ball on, it shoots it. It's got some pretty great grouping and uh, it's very fast actually. So you can see our distance sensor mounted right there and we put the range, we put the range so it's very close to it so it only shoots exactly when there's a tie ball in the exact spot we want. And then we have this custom poly just to hold it. So here we have our hang, it just is on a single piston and it goes up and we have these wedges here to, it goes up and just hangs like a few centimeters off the ground. Our hang is pretty consistent and reliable. All right, so our intake is pretty simple. It's just an 11 watt flex wheel intake. It has these sleds on it, so you can go into the goal nicely. Uh, it is a 600 RPM motor. Oh, so you just wanna... So when, it's, when the robot's actually moving around and stuff, it intakes a lot better. But it, it'll hold it and prop it up. Goes into the goal pretty well these sleds. And we have this high strength shaft right here with some rubber mat on it. It pushes the travel in very well and, and it also acts as structural support. Oh, and we have this we have this piece of poly at the bottom as well, just captures the travel nicely. Uh, 
So yeah, that's the intake. Pretty nice. And we have these zip ties on to touch for a ton of swim point as well. Final thing, our intake release. Just have this little caps nut on the screw right here on our hang and it locks onto the standoff when we set our robot up for autonomous. And then right at the start, you just activate the hang and then the intake pops down so that we can stay in size. Yeah, but I... Let's do that one more time. <laughs> Try more like flung and hit me in the knife. <laughs> I like to the camera. <laughs> so on this we have a single shot. Ow! <laughs> Put that in the blue face.